you could say the top speed is a good metric to determine where the EUCs are at in terms of the technological evolution. And yeah, we're far behind where, where we could be. You know, what's the fastest EUC in the world? 90 kilometers an hour? You know, it's not that fast really. There's four, you know, there's the long pronghorn antelope can run 95 kilometers an hour. Play. And guys, I just want to take a minute a couple of minutes to show you this footage because this is something that I've learned to appreciate after riding an EUC. Before I'd ridden an EUC, I would have looked at this and just been like, whatever. But I just find this so impressive because you know what it feels like to be going fast on an EUC. And these things can run at about 100 kilometers an hour, 95. And that's crazy, isn't it? Imagine running at that speed. Like if you've ever been on your EUC, even at 60, 70 it's like it's kind of unfathomable and there's also the cheetah the cheetah can run a bit faster only a few k's an hour faster but i think this is the most impressive animal or the most impressive runner on earth because although it's a couple of k's slower than the cheetah it can jog at like 40 miles an hour Right now it's jogging. It can do this for miles and miles. Like a car. A cheetah can't do that. They can only sprint. You know, if they jog, they still get tired really quickly. These guys here can just keep going. It's crazy. Look at that. Look, it looks like a motorbike, the way it's kicking dust. The way it's kicking back that dust. Crazy. That it lives out here like a savage in the wild. And it just eats whatever it finds, whatever leaves or whatever it eats. And it's got the work output of an automobile, a V6 gasoline engine. It's insane. But yeah, this goes for ages, so let's move on. They actually migrate like this. I've seen some running along the highway next to cars at like freeway speeds. And they just keep going, you know, it's, it's nuts. Like they can go to a sprint and then slow back down but just keep running. So yeah, this is a mutt. To me, this is far more impressive than the cheetah. Where are they limited? How fast could they go? Let's say if we had unlimited battery power and motor power. Really, the motor's already there. Like, we can have super powerful motors. But let's say there's no limit to the power. How fast can an EUC go? And in the past, if you looked at some of, maybe not some, maybe it was just one video where I talked about this. I said that it's like, 130 kilometers an hour is like the theoretical maximum I'm not saying like I didn't calculate that I'm just like estimating based on what well, I was I was estimating back then and I was wrong and I'll explain why um, yeah I said it was about 130 because you need to lean forward right and the the more wind resistance you've got the the more you need to lean forward Right, so you're gonna end up being like this, just to keep your speed. So I was saying you'd have maximum downforce when you're upright, but as you lean forward, that vector changes, right? And the vertical component of that gravity downforce is lessened. So you lose grip. This is what I said, right? This is what I was, that was my logic. You'd lose grip and eventually you'd slip. Once you lean too much, 
you've got no downforce anymore and you've got no ability to, to deliver more power to the road through the tires grip because you need the grip relies on downforce right if you had no downforce you'd have no grip no matter how grippy your tire is and I was wrong that's wrong it doesn't work like that even if you're leaning like this much you've still got maximum downforce the only reason the vector has changed is because the acceleration you're adding to that vector. So the gravity is still the same. You've got the same amount of gravity, but you've got a, an acceleration which is horizontal, right? So you add one arrow to the other arrow, and you've got a diagonal arrow, which is your resultant acceleration vector. And the result is that we can pretty much go as fast as a motorbike if we had enough power. The only caveat to that is you need a super smooth road. Where is the What's up guys? We're just gonna play a couple of clips before we get into the actual video. Just some interesting stuff I caught with my super zoom camera and I'm getting good at holding this thing steady. The total zoom is 240 times when you're at max zoom and you can see stuff from really far away. And that helicopter is just about to take off actually. And guys, without sounding like I'm bragging, I don't know how I'm holding this thing so steady. Because in the past, even with a tripod, I couldn't get it this steady. with max zoom. Right there is 240 times zoom. Don't worry guys, we're gonna start the video soon. I hope you're enjoying this footage though. If you're not, just skip ahead. But we just got one more little clip. Alright, the video is about to start. What's up, guys? So, I just wanted to add a few more points to the last video. It was about, I um, 
I EUC is being very simple and because of that there's not much development that needs to go into them or like to put it in better words it won't take much work to develop them to the stage where they're you know perfected you can't really say perfect but close to perfect for example the Ferrari I mean not Ferrari the automobile took like a hundred years to get to where it is today right the EUC will only take 10 years let's say to do the same thing to get to like ultimate stages right but I was really only talking about the the handling of them you know like how a car can handle really differently depending on how it's designed and so many factors go into that like how far apart are the front tires how far are a part of the back you know back and front tires the steering wheel you know how is it connected to the front tires to the front wheels you know like it's going to change how big is the steering wheel so many factors go into a car and you know the aerodynamics are super important in a car in an EUC it's not that important at all you know it's just this tiny thing like can you imagine putting a wing on your EUC to like get more downforce I mean you could you could have like a, a pointed front as well to like reduce drag but really it's going to make such a minuscule difference that I don't see anyone ever doing that you know, someone might just to make it look cool, but it's going to make hardly any difference. So really, EUCs are that simple that there's not much you can really do. And like I said in the last video, the Sherman, they say the Sherman is perfect, right? That is say it's perfect. They say it's like perfectly balanced because you got even number of batteries on each side. You got like... I think 120 cells on one side, 120 on the other side. So you've got even weight distribution. And that's such a simple thing, isn't it? All EUCs should have that. I don't know who put more cells on one side. I, the only thing I could think of is maybe Gotway did it because most people are right-footed, right? And they expect a certain number of their EUCs to explode. So if they put more cells on the left side, they're going to do less damage to people's good foot, you know, or their good leg. That's the only thing I can think of, guys. But aside from that, there's no point. Just put the even number of cells on each side. It's, you know, must be easier to design it that way too. And the thing I didn't talk about in that video is the software side of things a lot of development can go into that and i didn't even mention that but really that's another simple thing that should be perfected by now it's a very simple electromechanical system where all it's doing it's measuring an angle right and it's keeping the euc upright based on the angle it measures and what happens when you lean forward, you push the angle forward, right? It senses that and it tries to accelerate to keep you upright again. Kind of like when you rip the rug out of someone's feet, it sends them backwards. Well, that's what it's doing. As you lean forwards, it kind of pulls the rug from under your feet just enough to put you upright again. And if you lean back, of course, it does the opposite. It pulls the rug the other way by braking. So it's a simple thing and it should be perfected you, you shouldn't have these issues like the sherman for example it, it has that leaning issue like it ends up leaning too much forwards normally like that's what i found so you got to put it on hard mode like strong mode you know how you got like soft mode where the euc will give more it'll have more give like when you lean forward it will allow the angle to change a bit more before it gives it full force to send you back upright again and yeah the sherman has a that issue a bit you know you probably heard about it but it's not that bad like when i rode my 16 next for ages and i got back on my sherman i found it to be bad i was like dude this is weird but then i kind of got used to it and then i put it in strong like it was in medium mode 
and then when I put it back in strong mode it went away a little bit and now I'm used to it it's like it's still a bit annoying sometimes I find it's like leaning forward a bit and I like to be leaning back I, I always have like a a backwards tilt angle the pedal tilt angle and that's because I don't have power pads so it keeps you safer it, it makes it harder for you to slide off the front of the pedals if you've got power pads it doesn't matter so much because it holds you in place but yeah that's where the more development could go into but like I said it's simple the other thing though that I didn't mention is the battery technology of course we're limited by our battery technology mostly like you could say you know the motor technology too but really electric motors are far ahead of battery performance it's the batteries that are lagging behind electric motors are crazy like I've seen there's a new electric motor it's like this big and it has 300 horsepower it's insane so you, we could have we could have an EUC with like I would say at least 30 horsepower if we had enough battery power probably more probably like 60 horsepower like it's kind of crazy that's like 45 kilowatts by the way but yeah we're limited in that sense and the, actually this will lead on to something interesting you could say the top speed is a good metric to determine where the EUCs are at in terms of the technological evolution and yeah we're far behind where, where we could be you know what's the fastest EUC in the world 90 kilometers an hour you know it's not that fast really there's four you know there's the long pronghorn antelope can run 95 kilometers an hour on grass you know a, just an animal with legs pretty crazy animal though that animal it runs nearly as fast as a cheetah but it can keep up like 40 miles an hour for like miles and miles it's like yeah it's crazy that's that getting off topic though what i'm saying is that we should be ahead of legged animals you know the cheetah can run over 100 kilometers an hour our ec should be going like 110 120 but where are they limited how fast could they go let's say if we had unlimited battery power and motor power really the motor's already there like we can have super powerful motors but let's say there's no limit to the power how fast can an EUC go and in the past if you looked at some of maybe not some maybe it was just one video where I talked about this I said that it's like 130 kilometers an hour is like the theoretical maximum I'm not saying like I didn't calculate that I'm just like estimating based on well I was I was estimating back then and I was wrong and I'll explain why um, yeah I said it was about 130 because you need to lean forward right and the the more wind resistance you've got the the more you need to lean forward right so you're gonna end up being like this just to keep your speed you're not like trying to push you know you're not trying to accelerate you're not trying to go up a hill you're just trying to maintain your speed but you're gonna be leaning super hard just to do that because the wind resistance right that's how EUCs work to um, what do you say to prompt them to deliver the torque you need to lean forward because that's like I said the system measures the angle and the more you lean forward the more torque it prompts the system to deliver right the, f the faster you're going the more wind resistance there is therefore the more force you need to push through it therefore the more torque you need to deliver that force down to the road through the tire and the faster you're going the more you need to lean so that's why I said it would be limited to around 130 maybe 140 150 kilometers per hour and that's like 90 miles an hour 90 miles an hour is like 144 k's an hour so 
Yeah, just around 90, 100 miles an hour. But I was wrong, guys. And what something that someone said is that motorbikes, they can do monos, right? You know, just a regular motorbike. You lift up the front tire and you're on one wheel. And motorbikes can do a mono at like well over, you know, 150 miles an hour. Probably even close to 200. You know, it's probably even possible. But I said that EUCs couldn't do that because of the physics, right? Because a motorbike has so much weight up front. You know, you've got, say you're on the back tire, then you've got all this leverage. You've got like all that weight up front. It's leverage. That, that's how the EUC works. You deliver leverage to the system and that promotes it to deliver a torque, a reaction torque, which puts you back upright. So you're leaving it that way and the torque pushes you back that way with the reaction force. You know, the wheels spinning on the road, bang, it pushes you back. So a motorbike has a lot more leverage because of that weight, right? Leverage is based on force and distance. And you've got all that distance from the back tire, like a lever, you know? So you can just, you know, get high speed, without falling backwards right you go bang you go back down the road and not only that if you lean forward too much on a motorbike you just put that front tire back down and you you cruise no problem on an euc imagine leaning forward like that where your head your nose would be like an inch from the ground you know where the tire would normally be on a motorbike so the physics of it is so different and it allows the motorbike to reach much higher speeds on one wheel but I was wrong in saying that the EUC would be that limited. Why? It's because, and this is a little bit complex. I'll close out the video with this, try to follow, but, and I'll try my best to explain it. Basically, when you're leaning, right? Let's say you're leaning at this angle. No, sorry, let's say you're straight. You're straight up, vertical. Then the gravity downforce is, is parallel to your position, right? So I was saying you'd have maximum downforce when you're upright. But as you lean forward, that vector changes, right? And the vertical component of that gravity downforce is lessened. So you lose grip. This is what I said, right? This is what I was, that was my logic. You'd lose grip and eventually you'd slip. Once you lean too much, you've got no downforce anymore and you've got no ability to, to deliver more power to the road through the tire's grip. Because you need, the grip relies on downforce, right? If you had no downforce, you'd have no grip, no matter how grippy your tire is. And I was wrong, that's wrong. It doesn't work like that. Even if you're leaning like this much, you've still got maximum downforce. The only reason the vector has changed is because the acceleration you're adding to that vector through the force of the motor, right? So the gravity is still the same. You've got the same amount of gravity. Whoops, what's going on there? But you've got a, an acceleration which is horizontal, right? So you add one arrow to the other arrow and you've got a diagonal arrow which is your resultant um, acceleration vector and the result is that we can pretty much go as fast as a motorbike if we had enough power right the only caveat to that is you need a super smooth road and it's same with a motorbike really you're not gonna go 150 miles an hour on a bumpy broken up road or like off-road so you need a smooth road anyway, but it's even more important on an EUC because, you know, if you fall, you're on the ground. On a motorbike, let's say you hit a bump and you're doing a mono and you got, you know, sends you forward. All that happens is the front tire touches down and you can just keep going. You know, you might fall off, but on an EUC, what happens is you face plant. So yeah, you need a super smooth road. But the thing is, we can achieve incredible speeds if we had enough power. We could easily go 200 kilometers an hour on an EUC. I am absolutely sure of that. Now that I've analyzed the physics of this correctly, 
I would say the sky's the limit. I mean, uh, the, it probably couldn't go more than 200 miles an hour, let's say. Maybe, who, who knows? Probably not, though. But at 150, probably, 150 miles an hour. That's 240 k's an hour. I definitely think it could. The only thing, though, is you'd need power pads, Ab like, definitely. Because you need to be able to deliver enough torque onto the EUC. And, yeah. I just find it interesting because... Because I had analyzed this problem in the past, like I said, and I was wrong. When I said 130 would be the limit. It's probably double that. It's crazy. Can you imagine going that fast on an EUC too? Like, just try and picture it. It would just be the most crazy feeling. It would be better than flying. It would be like flying a jet at supersonic speed, one inch from the ground, just like... And the sound, if you had the knobby tire on, the sound it would make would just be like, unfathomable. It would be like a swarm of bees the size of a city. You'd hear that thing coming from like, the outback, you know. <laughs> Try and imagine it, it'd be crazy. But yeah, that's that's pretty much the video for today. I'll probably talk about something else just quick. I had um, some crazy dreams. Like, it was a while ago. I should have mentioned it when it happened. So it's fresh in my memory. But I can still remember it pretty clear. I had, like... Had, have, tell me, have you guys ever had an EUC dream? Like, have you... In your dream, have you ever been riding an EUC? I haven't. Not once. But I've had EUC dreams. I'm not riding. And I'll tell you what happened. It was crazy, like... It felt like one of them, actually, no, what am I saying? In one of them, I was riding. I crashed. The other one, I wasn't riding. But I'll tell you the one I was riding first. I crashed. And I came off the EUC. I was going really fast, too. And the EUC hit my leg really hard, like so hard that my whole leg went numb. I couldn't feel anything. And when I woke up out of that dream... My leg was still numb. Can you believe it? That's how real the dream was. And it went away after like a few minutes after I woke up. I don't know if it was numb because maybe I was lying down in a certain position where it was restricting blood flow to my leg. And then maybe that prompted my brain to have that dream. I don't know. Dreams are crazy like that though. I've had lots of dreams like that, guys. And I mean, not... Not like that as in on an EUC, just like that where something around you prompts something to happen in your dream, like maybe a noise, you know, sound of you know something, and then it will become part of your dream in a very sophisticated manner where it's like a whole story happened and then that was part of the dream, you know, it's kind of crazy. Even to the point where it, like, it must have been planned or something. You know, like, how did your brain plan all that dream out when that noise only came later? Do you know what I mean? Like, that noise came later, but your brain had already planned out this whole story. Like, it knew that noise was going to come. Crazy, but... The other dream I had? My friggin' Sherman was on fire, guys. And this was a while ago. This was, like, months ago. And I don't remember what I did, like... I think I looked at it and it was on fire and I was like, dude, what am I going to do? Uh, you know, I can't touch this thing. So I just watched it burn. And then I woke up and I was relieved. I was like, oh, thank God. Because it kind of felt real. Like, you know, those dreams where you're, you're not sure if you're in a dream. And sometimes you even wake up and you're still not sure. Was that a dream? Like, did that actually happen? And then I just laid here and then, you know fell asleep then woke up but it really did happen before I laid here do you know what I'm saying and so I went and looked at my show and I was like thank god it was just a dream and yeah th those are the only two dreams I've had where an EUC has been involved out of all the dreams I've had 
Just two. Weird, because I would have thought, you know, we ride these things every day. Well, I do. And you would think it would be part of your dreams more. Should be the norm. Every time you're in a dream, traveling, it should be on an EUC. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Imagine if you rode the S20 in your dream, or like all these new wheels coming out. The S21. Get some insight into the market, the future of the market. The S30. But yeah, let's leave it at that, guys. And we're at that beautiful place. The kangaroos chill behind that fence. You know those kangaroos you saw the other day? They weren't, this wasn't out here. That was real, like, much further out. Like, how do you call it? In a more secluded area where you don't see many people. This area is a, kind of a controlled area, you know? You've got all these fences. You've got gates at the openings. They shut at, like, 8 p.m. I don't even know what, if you got locked in here. I don't know what you'd do. Like, just have to call the cops or something, say... I got locked in. But yeah, you only see kangaroos behind the fence, right? But the other day I saw them like no fence between us. I don't think they're dangerous. Like I heard someone mention that they can grab you and they've got like big claws. It's kind of scary. Because they must be strong too. They can run. They can hop. They don't even run. They hop, right? At 70 kilometers per hour. Can you imagine that? Like, if they're not right, like even running. I think one animal can actually run at that speed. It's the ostrich. With two legs, they run like a human, but they can run 70 kilometers an hour. But the kangaroo hops at that speed. It's freaking insane, isn't it? Imagine if they kicked you in the face. It would take your head off. But from what I've seen, they're very timid and peaceful creatures. But yeah, we'll leave it at that, guys. Um, we'll find out another topic like this for the next one, hopefully. Peace.